Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are continuing on with some AP Physics 1 circular motion problems. So let's look at this. Again, I recommend you pause the video, try to do the problem, get as far as you can, and um, then come back and see any tips or see, see how it compared to what I did. So a heavy ball swings at the end of a string as shown above with negligible air resistance. Point P is the lowest point reached by the ball in its motion, and point Q is one of the two highest points. On the following diagrams, draw and label vectors that could represent the velocity and acceleration of the ball at points P and Q. If a vector is zero, explicitly state this fact. The dashed lines indicate horizontal and vertical directions. Uh, velocity and acceleration. Okay, so in circular motion, velocity is tangential. Acceleration is perpendicular, and it's always directed towards the center. So at point P, um, that's a pendulum motion. So I have a little bit of, this would be my acceleration. Acceleration is definitely upward, and my velocity is going like this. At point Q, when I'm up here, let's see, point P is the lowest point. This is one of the two highest points. Okay. So its velocity is still tangential, like here, because it's going to swing down along this arc path, right? So that's the velocity. And um, yeah, its acceleration is still, well, we have to decide. It has a little bit of tangential acceleration. So this that's the tricky part here. Because um, it has a little bit, like if I think about gravity and that, it's accelerating in this direction. So it, has, it, ha it would have a little bit of tangential. It would have, obviously, the circular motion because it's staying on a circular motion. But it has a little portion tangentially. So the resulting vector would actually be a little bit like this. Because this is not pure cir circular motion. Pure circular motion is constant velocity over the circular path. But this is definitely not going to move at constant velocity. It's going to be slower up here, and it's going to be fastest down here. You haven't done pendulums or energy transfer yet, but like you would for this kind of question, you would know that, and so you would know that the velocity would be um, um, would have to be uh, lower up here and higher up here. Okay, and after several swings, the string breaks. Um, the mass of the string and the air resistance are negligible. On the following diagram, sketch the path of the ball if the break occurs in the pause at point P or Q. In each case, briefly describe the motion after the break. So if I cut it right here, its velocity was like this. So it's going to continue along, and it's going to go like this. Okay, until it hits the ground. At point Q, its velocity was going like this. So it would kind of go like this and hit the ground. That would be its path. Okay, it would be that's sort of a kinematic question. Interesting. Was that the only part of the? I mean, that's this this kind of a question is a lot of writing, um, but maybe that was the only part of that question there was. So, no computation there. Kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I think there wasn't anything on the next page. Yep. Um, yeah. So let me take a look at how would you, I, I want to just talk briefly on how you would solve the kinematics if you had to. You would know its velocity, if you knew its velocity here, um, you know, like a lot of the questions could be really complicated. Like say, say, say like they told you how far it went. Like they gave you this distance D and they wanted to ask you what the tension in the rope was at this point. You know, that's like a question that you could ask. From the distance, you would have to use kinematics to find the initial velocity here. Once you have V, you would know that the tension minus mg would have to equal mv squared over r. So that's like a, something you, you could do. And then you could solve for t. So t would be mg plus mv squared over r. I don't know if that made sense to you. Uh, the, at the point P here, it's got a force downward, mg, and a force upward tension. And the net force here has to be upward to cause the acceleration, right? This T minus mg has to give me the, the centripetal acceleration upward, right? So T minus mg is equal to ma. And so T would be mg plus mv squared over r. To solve this, you would need to know mg r 
and you would need to know the velocity, right? So, so this is a quick question, but hopefully you found it um, helpful, at least a very conceptual question and a little bit tricky with the tangential acceleration, not just pure circular motion. So hope you found it helpful and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.